Hi, I'm Christian Millick, and today I wanted to share with you my castle facade project that I made. I'm going to take you through the process of how I made it, then we'll talk about the pros and cons of the finished product, and then I'm going to give you some advice if you want to tackle a similar project to this one. Stay tuned. So as you see, I started with the pink insulation foam, I think made famous by Black Magic Craft. Uh, this is just your standard um, three quarter inch pink foam that you can find at the big hardware stores. I think I got this at like a Home Depot or maybe it was Lowe's. Anyway, um, the project started out small. I just wanted to make like a drawbridge entrance um, with like fake stonework and so I took some measurements, wanting it to be in scale with, you know, 30 millimeter miniatures, and then started sketching out the stonework, just with a fairly blunt uh, pencil, like a regular number two pencil. I took measurements along the way, but then roughed out a lot of it. Here, I, you can see I forgot to do the, um, the stone treatment with the tin foil ball, but I went back and added that tin foil treatment and after it was good and textured, I went back to creating the stonework. I did look at some reference art. I looked at, you know, pictures on Google of different castles and how they uh, go together, like where the different windows are, where the, the drawbridge chain radiates from, things like that. Um, but more or less, once I'd looked at the picture for a little bit, I just sort of winged it. And off like a shot, I just started drawing out stone. Then I decided it needed an uh, overhang at the top. It was sort of this um, characteristic overhang at the top of castle walls. Um, oh, actually, this is me cutting out the uh, the battlements. You know, the, uh, there we go. Cutting out the battlements, and then I flipped it over and started on the other side. When I first started this project, I thought this was it. I was just going to make this one piece to represent the front of a castle and that doing both sides of it made a lot of sense. Had I planned out the project in its totality, I'm not sure I would have done this much work on the interior. Certainly you'll see once the project starts ballooning out of control, I uh, don't work on the inside nearly as much as I did here at the beginning. Here's where I have to start cutting out the drawbridge entrance, the main entrance to the castle. I recommend not trying to do it in one big door-shaped piece, but instead I cut it out into smaller cubes, uh, which made it easier to remove the pieces. And I kind of scored it from both sides, and with some work I was able to get out the individual blocks. And then I started scoring along the inside of that, uh, where I removed so that the stonework continues on into, into the arch there. So it looks like real stone, not just a facade that just ends. And you can see me here just sort of continuing the lines that I created from the front and the back to make a continuous piece of stone. This is when the project started getting kind of big. I decided I was gonna to make two towers, sort of the gatehouse towers on either side of the opening. So I cut some circles of the pink insulation foam for the top and bottom floors, as well as like a, a middle floor. I had this idea that I was going to be making um, full cylinders using foam core. And I've never done that before. I'm not sure I've ever seen it done. So I wanted to try it out. And I knew I needed a strong core to wrap the foam core around. So here I am making the foam circles that will support the outer towers.
and then I started in earnest on doing the tower exteriors. Like I said, I made these out of foam core. I re removed the paper from both sides of the foam core. And it's worth saying one of these pieces of foam core was really easy to work with. And one of them was a little more difficult to work with, even though I got them both at the Dollar Tree. They're both that uh, inexpensive ready board. Uh, but one of them took, uh, took the pencil designs really easily and quickly and I got a really nice texture going. And the other piece was um, the foam might have been denser or something because it, it didn't really, uh, it had more of a surface tension to it, more of a, an exterior hardness that more cracked instead of deformed when I used the pencil. Um, so the two towers aren't the same, but uh, when it's all said and done, it's kind of hard to tell which one is which. So this is just me doing that stonework. And it's showing you how I use the same tin foil to create a wood texture. Instead of rolling the tin foil, I scraped it across all in one direction, all in one grain, to create a wood texture for the uh, the floors are the inside of the towers. Uh, again, I know, I'm not sure I've ever seen seen this done. I've seen Black Magic Craft use like a wire brush. I didn't have a wire brush to hand, so I just used the tin foil, and it gave me, I thought, a pretty good wood texture. And then you come back uh, in with the pencil to draw in the wood planks. Now I don't use um, squares, I don't grid out these larger pieces of terrain that I make, but I do try to create subtle hints as to what the one inch grid would be or what the grid would be. Uh, so here you can see I'm measuring out the distance between the boards. Um, there are half inch wide boards and by staggering the planks by an inch you can just about see where the one inch squares are without drawing out squares and that's not the, that would take away from the aesthetic and here i am just adding the nail holes with just the end of my pencil A little carried away at one point I decided that I wanted stairs to be leading down from the top tower I tried to carve out individual stairs but that didn't work out so I just cut out the stairs entirely and then glued in little pieces of foam core to create the uh, the staircase leading down all right so here I am like I said I wanted to create that overhang uh, and so I cut off the top here uh, where the, the top of the battlements so I create that characteristic overhang that you see on a lot of castles. This was still early on enough in the process that I didn't really know what the exact floor heights were, and I'm not really sure how much it matters um, if you're using this terrain for like 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons, it's pretty easy to figure out ranges and stuff like that no matter what the floor how, how the floors are so I made this adjustment and then made the uh, the rest of the towers here to match all right here was the hard part getting the foam core to wrap around those circular pieces um, like I said one piece worked really well uh, curved around easily this is the piece that did not work out so well you can see it creasing in places rather than actually uh, curling them around. But the end result is still pretty good. This took a lot of patience, gluing it little bits at a time. You can see the, the one that came out really good. It's the one that's finished off to the right. There it is rolling around. And the other one took some work. So I just took my time. And then I wanted to add some uh, 
battlements to the top of the towers, and I want it to have the same kind of overhang as the rest, as the center facade. And so I was adding these extra stone pieces to wrap around the tower, making sure to create the stone texture on all the sides that are going to be visible, and the stone uh, division. Here I am gluing it on. And then for the actual battlements, I did those with individual pieces of pink bone. Like I said earlier, if I had planned this out from the beginning, I think it would have come out better, and I think I would have finished it uh, more quickly. Because here is sort of the least attractive part of my castle facade, is the join between these battlements and the top of the tower. Uh, not very not very well done um, but uh, I guess my advice would be to make sure that, that the area is flush or that there's some sort of you know um, keyed in connection between the two pieces of foam so that they are, are well supported mine were not well supported um, so do better than me Add more of those battles. Like I said this took a long time because it wasn't well planned out. I think with good planning, uh, this process would have turned out better and gone more smoothly. So here it is, principally done ready for paint Just showing you here that uh, you know once you get the pieces tacked together then I added some welds of hot glue to hold it all together uh, very strongly and here in the back I didn't show how I created these but I added a little extra structures out the back so that once the characters go through the drawbridge there's somewhere for them to go to um, so it's just a very simple two pillars and a couple pieces of pink foam that I textured out the same way I textured the uh, tower tops with the wooden the wood texture. And now it's time to add the black Mod Podge mixture. Uh, this is just black, really just a little bit of black paint mixed with matte Mod Podge, and you try to get down into all the recesses. It takes some time, um, and it's sort of a messy business but it is worth it. It is worth it to get this on there. It gives it a, a lot of strength and it's a good base coat to work from for your, for your painting. And uh, I went through a fair amount of Mod Podge. This is one of the largest pieces of gaming terrain I've made. I, did, I didn't think it was going to be when I started, but it ended up being pretty big. So I went through a fair amount of Mod Podge, making sure to get into all those nooks and crannies of every single stone, and I made sure to let it dry completely before I did any painting. So while that was drying, I decided to make my drawbridge. Um, very similar process, I made it out of this uh, foam core, created the texture on it, uh, the wood texture and then created the individual stones. But here I am still sort of mapping out the shape based on some measurements I just took of the opening that I created in on the, uh, on the facade in the front of the castle. And I tried to make it as symmetrical as possible. But I think my end result is not at this point, I was getting getting a little tired of this project. It, it really ballooned into something much larger than I wanted it to be. Um, and so I was just trying to get it done at this point. So there's some there's some rushed there's some rushed geometries, but it looks it looks good enough for a tabletop, certainly. And then, like I said, I started marking out the individual planks. And I added some wood 
Here, I wanted the drawbridge to open and close, and I accomplished that by using fairly heavy gauge uh, pins, like sewing pins, uh, through the foam core and through, I just drilled tiny holes into some, you know, popsicle sticks that would create a hinge, just tiny holes in the popsicle sticks with the pin pushed through into the foam core of the drawbridge. And that creates uh, a pretty good hinge. And then I painted that up in the same black Mod Podge mixture as the rest of the castle. And once that was done, and while it was drying, it was time to start dry brushing the castle itself. We started with just sort of a neutral slate gray. These are just Americana craft paints, nothing special. I think they, you know, it's like a dollar a bottle at the craft store. And you wipe off the excess paint and just go to town. Really, you want to try to do downward strokes, I think, uh, look the best for your primary strokes to be from the top down. But I decided to go uh, all in on this one. I did back and forth strokes, all sorts of strokes to get that stone texture to show you. All right, here's the finished piece. Um, I think I came up pretty good, though it does have some pros and cons to it. Uh, when I started out, I just was making this centerpiece here, and it sort of organically grew into this whole thing. I'm glad that it did, because I think the real innovation here is creating the stonework flat on foam core, and then wrapping it around a circular base to create the rounded tower, instead of making each individual brick. But let's take a closer look at some of the details here, and I'll tell you some of the things I like and some of the things I didn't like, and then we'll talk about maybe some advice or if you want to tackle a similar project. All right, first let's look at this drawbridge here. Um, one of the things I wish I had done differently is I wish that these chains were parallel so that when the door comes up, uh, it's more of a flush, taut connection. When it is in the up position, the chains well, it's not the most attractive look, and it's not really historically accurate. All the doors I've seen like this, the chains are parallel. So I would have changed that. Um, a couple other things uh, of note is this foam, this piece of foam core, for whatever reason, just wrapped much easier around the circle than this one. So there is sort of this noticeable crease across, right across the window area here. Eh, it might not show up too well, but I see it. Um, it just creates a little bit of a an inconsistency that I don't love. Another problem with this tower is that my lines aren't parallel. If you look closely, kind of the castle is drooping off to one side here. And I cut too deeply into the foam core at one point here, um, so that there's, there's a sort of a strange gapping that doesn't quite look right either. Basically, this piece of foam core was a lot more trouble than this one, which just acted perfectly and is the reason that I'm sharing this at all, because um, if your foam core works like this one does, you're gonna have a blast and you're gonna have a really great result. All right, let's take a look at the real problems on this castle. Um, the tops of my towers are a disaster. Um, I didn't know what, how this was gonna go together at the end, and each of these, as you saw in the construction video, are individual pieces. That's totally fine. 
but there's this weird gapping between the foam core of the tower and then the foam core pieces that make up this um, this built up edge and so there's like a hole in here which was difficult to paint and you can't put a miniature there um, it's really a waste of space and it's pretty ugly when you when viewed at this angle um, another problem with the tower while I love my stair effect that I have here where I painted the very last stair in a uh, black 3.0 paint so it looks like it's just darkness down in there I wish that it was the perfect spot to put a miniature I wish I'd made it so you could accommodate the base of the standard miniatures that I use for Dungeons and Dragons so you could have a guy coming up the stairs and he would be standing in the darkness there that would have been cool that would that would have been good design as it is it's sort of a waste of space you can't really put a miniature there um, without it falling over so that would have been a nice improvement but the look is pretty cool if I did it again it would accommodate a miniature same thing with the uh, the battlements here I think I would create enough spacing between the battlements to actually place a miniature with the standard miniature base between each of those uh, crenellations so that it could represent a character you know leaping over the wall if that's how uh, the players wanted to attack this castle or if that's how uh, the game took place maybe someone wants to get that height advantage and leaps up onto the battlements um, but you can't fit a miniature between any of these and I would actually use the base for spacing as to make sure that the spacing was even between each of these and that you could fit the miniature base. Coming around to the back now, um, some things that I might change if I were to do it again. You know, I have the uh, sides of the castle come out pretty far, which makes it a little difficult to get in here, and certainly the shapes of the, you know, I've got these circles in here to put your miniatures so they can fire out the arrow loops, but the actual shape here is uh, not a semicircle. It uh, squares out at the back, so either I would have cut these to be the, sh the shape uh, of my end result, or I would have cut this back so that you can uh, get in here easier with your hands. Um, and again, I was this was sort of organically put together. Uh, I didn't intend it to be as big a piece as this. And so if you're planning, if you're designing, and you say this is what it's going to look like, when I finally finish, that's going to help you a lot. Instead of just sort of throwing it together as you go, then you have sort of these things that you're not very happy with at the end. I do like this big play area here. You know, when they're, the adventurers get over the wall, they can have a good uh, battle on this big piece here. So I like that design. And I like the design of just these simple connections here. So you couldn't put some miniatures on this level to fire down. Um, and, you know, obviously in a real castle, there'd be stairs or something like that leading up to get to the different sections, a door perhaps leading in. All this I did not include, um, but I think that at least having the different levels is a fun, is a fun option. I think the mechanism for raising and lowering the drawbridge, which is all just done in craft sticks, they're basically just popsicle sticks, just a little longer, thinner, and thicker. Um, I think this came out pretty good. It's just a basic piece of engineering. There's there's really no trick to it. Um, I did not take a video of me constructing it, however, so uh, you may have to figure out this bit on your own for now. Um, but just think of it as the chains being attached to a piece that can slide freely. Um, if you played with Legos at all, I just was just using popsicle sticks like Legos, just cutting them to the right size and stacking them until I had the right clearances. Um, and I just glued them together with hot glue, um, which worked fine if you score the pieces of sticks. The hot glue has something to stick into really well. So that worked out okay. Uh, another place though where I would design it a little bit differently is here on this rampart wall. This is really not enough space for a miniature. A modern, a modern miniature is a little too big and will fall off of this so I wish that this was like a step up which I like but that this this was a good inch wide so you can fit your miniature right in that spot um, would have been perfect but as I said this went together organically and I wasn't thinking about those things as it grew and grew and grew um, but it came out pretty cool 
So finally, what's my advice if you wanted to put something together like this? Well, as a designer, I think that it would come out way better if you sat down and took a few minutes to plot out what you wanted the finished product to basically look like, what you wanted its dimensions to be, what its goals are as an object. You know, um, I think this is very playable, but it has these flaws. And if I'd plotted it out from the beginning, what I wanted it to be able to do in a game, then it would have come out a little bit better and some of those flaws would have, uh, wouldn't have happened. So I think my first piece of advice is design. You know, sit down, design the piece so you know what you want it to do when it's done. Um, organic creation is really fun and I had a lot of fun making this, but I don't think any fun is taken away and maybe a little bit of frustration is added. If you plot out, you know, you know, this is how high I want floor one to be. This is how high I want floor two to be. This is how big I want my squares to be and here's how I'm gonna mark them. Here's how wide I want my stairs to be so I can fit a miniature down in there. Here's how much space I want the top of the towers to be. Here's how I want the drawbridge to operate. All these things, just think about it. Write down your goals as a designer before setting out on the project. That's my first piece of advice. My second piece of advice is if you're trying to curve the uh, foam core like I did here, I think the key, the difference between this one and this one is that I'd peeled off the paper for months on this piece, you know, it was didn't have any paper on it for months, uh, whereas this one I peeled the paper off right away. That's the only difference I can think of, as how this one acted so perfectly in getting that nice smooth curve, and this one's a little janky. Um, so if you're planning a project like this, or really if you want to use foam core in miniature uh, terrain building, as soon as you get it home from the dollar store, just peel that, peel the paper right off of it. And then this is that dollar store ready board uh, the Black Magic Craft uses. The, the paper comes off really easily. Use that foam core, peel the paper off, and then wait, I guess, or maybe put it out in the sun. Uh, I haven't tried that yet. I'm gonna experiment with this some more to make sure that this is not just a fluke. But I think that uh, being able to curve your foam core into a cylinder shape is going to really change the way that I build my, my miniature terrain and I hope it uh, is helpful for you too. I guess my final piece of advice is do it. You know, you can only discover what your balance is between playability and realistic terrain is if you do it yourself. You know, I discovered a lot about my preferences as I put this together and every time that I put together some miniature terrain, I'm always trying to balance. I want the piece to be able to be used in a game, but I also want it to look good and to sort of stand on itself as a piece of art. Um, and finding that balance for yourself, uh, I think, is important. Some people are going to want something to look very, very realistic and, and authentic, and other people are going to want it to be very, very demarcated so that they can be very useful in their games. Um, another thing to think about is modularity. It's like, I think this piece sort of stands on its own pretty well. You can imagine the walls, or you could build some walls pretty easily if you want to do a whole castle layout, but think about maybe, like I thought about for a while, should this towers, should the towers be separate pieces so you could play just the drawbridge or change out these tall towers for shorter towers or square towers. Um, think about how modular you want your pieces to be because this is this, it's not gonna change. It's, it's, uh, it's all glued together and it is what it is, as I'm saying. So think about if, you, if modularity is important to you I think you'll discover that if you do the project. So I hope that you do, and I hope that you have fun doing it. All right, so that's it. Uh, finally, if you don't know how YouTube works, mom, it, it would be really helpful to me if you uh, like this video, subscribe to my channel would be really great. Uh, give it a thumbs up, ring the bell so you know uh, when I'm new videos of mine uh, come up, and that tells me that this is the kind of content that you like. It tells YouTube that this is the kind of content that you like uh, and it helps me out in terms of knowing which direction to take this channel and uh, what kind of content people are, are uh, enjoying. So uh, until next time, this has been Christian Millick and I'll see you.